Kunis tea. How are ye? Welcome to the Candlelit Tales podcast and another story in our Battle Rage series. This episode is the story of Ferdia Macdaman, Warrior of Connacht. And it's being told today by Rue O'Shea, musician, soundscaper, and especially today, storyteller. This podcast is brought to you by our supporters at Patreon. You can join them over at patreon.com forward slash candlelit tales or make a one time donation to the PayPal button on our website. You can like, you can share, but for now, just enjoy. And Rue, tell us a story. Ferdia picked himself up off the ground. The beating of his heart felt like the beating of black wings. This sort of rage came upon him rarely. There was usually no need for it. More often than not, potential opponents would back down at the sight of Ferdia's battle feats. These displays of agility and weaponry skills would invoke fear and respect in other warriors. And no respectable warrior would risk bloodshed unnecessarily. That was the code of honour that they lived by. More often than not, his opponents would see Ferdia's battle feats and just lay down their weapons. But not this pup. Ferdia had been following his usual protocol, displaying athletic feats of agility when the lad had darted towards him lightning fast and just swiped the legs out from under him. Ferdia looked over at him, scowling as he dusted himself off. The seven lights in his opponent's eyes glittered in delight and his smile widened. Ferdia's heart rate increased at the sight of this, the black wings of battle rage beating faster. The lad called out to him. Are we fighting or not, you big oaf? Or do you plan on playing about with your wee handstands all day? At this... Ferdia lost the last of his composure and launched himself at the lad. Ferdia lay in the darkness of his sleeping quarters, feeling his bones ache, the bruises on his body throb. There may have been some mixed opinions on who had won the fight, but he was quite sure it was him, or so he told himself. Skahawk herself had witnessed it, though of course she would never reveal what she thought. Skahawk, the greatest trainer of warriors, the shadowy one. Ferdia had made his way to Skahawk's island from his Connacht's homeland months previously. He had undergone the entire training course and excelled as her brightest pupil, the best of the best. Ferdia had been born with a particular advantage, the congenicus, the impenetrable skin. Every inch of skin on Ferdia's body was as tough as a bull's horn. He could not be pierced with a blade. But that wasn't all there was to Ferdia's ability as a warrior. He was disciplined. He was steadfast in his training, a born defender of the homeland and practitioner of combat, tradition and etiquette. These traits had served him splendidly through his course of training. He had been ready to depart for home when the young pup had arrived in extravagant style. Rumours about this young warrior flew about the island like wildfire, that he had arrived on the island in a state of battle rage that transformed him into an unrecognisable monster that he had ambushed Skahawk herself, placing his sword between her breasts, demanding she make him her pupil, that he was the son of a Tuatha god, and thereby had godlike ability in battle, that in his Ulster homeland he had shed his birth name and acquired a new name, the Hound of Cullen, Ku Cullen. Ferdia didn't quite know what to make of these rumours. He just knew that something about the lad had gotten under his normally impenetrable skin. Ferdia was now willing to undergo the whole training course again in order to test himself against this lad. It wasn't time to leave the island yet. 
Suddenly, the door flew open. Ferdia sat up quickly in his bed with a sharp jolt of pain from his bruised ribs. At the door was a silhouette of a slight framed figure and Ferdia knew who it was instantly. I brought you some healing herbs. I thought you'd need them after that beating that I gave you. Ferdia grinned in spite of himself. Keep them for yourself, you pup. You must be in more need of them than I am. Anyway, shouldn't you be off with Skahawk's daughter? I heard you two were getting on famously. Hey, we've been getting on just fine. Though, I just thought I'd pay you a visit tonight instead. The silhouette stepped inside, the door closing in behind him. Time passed. Under Skahawk's watchful eye, Ferdia and Kukulan sparred with each other frequently. Ferdia felt a new dimension of warrior evolve within him. When fighting Kukulan, Ferdia could not rely on his dignified ritual of displaying battle feats. His impenetrable skin, that which set him apart from all the other warriors on the island, was equaled by Kukulan's godlike strength and lightning speed. In order to match Kukulan's prowess, Ferdia had to take inspiration from him. Kukulan fought every fight like his name depended on it. His every action was lit with the fire of his emotionality. Ferdia quickly learned to ignite himself with the same fire. Kukulan would goad him, jeer at him. Ferdia would allow the anger to run through his body, to fill him up with battle rage and give it right back to his friend. Kukulan evolved alongside Ferdia. If Kukulan had a weakness as a warrior, as Ferdia saw it, it was that his ego was too easily bruised, his control too easily lost, and his monstrous battle rage too easily invoked. This led to bloodshed which was against the warrior code that Ferdia held so dear. But Kukulan never lost control when fighting Ferdia. He seemed to absorb the composure and the focus that was so inherent to Ferdia's fighting style. When they sparred, Ferdia never witnessed Kukulan succumb to his battle rage. The two elevated each other and remained equals in the eyes of Skok. At night time, Ferdia would be in his quarters, never knowing when he would receive a visit. Kukulan spent plenty of nights indulging in his fractious relationship with Uadok, Skahok's daughter. Rumours abound about who else he spent nights with. But often, Ferdia's door would open, and his friend's slight frame would soon be nestled into Ferdia's arms. These visits were sometimes wordless, and other times would involve conversations that lasted till dawn. Ferdia told Kukulan about the rugged land that he came from, about his tribe, his fearbolic lineage, the persecution that was infused in their blood, the pressure placed on him to become a great defender of the land. Kukulan told Ferdia about Ulster, about how he never fit in there. The fact of him being half two a day Danon, marking him out as different. He spoke about losing his birth name at an early age, about how the new name bestowed upon him would live on the lips of storytellers forever, about how he had a great deed to live up to in order to achieve this. That is what brought Kukulan to Skahawk's Island. Only being the best would satisfy him. To this end, Kukulan had a growing obsession that he wished to speak of often, a topic that Ferdia preferred to avoid. The Gay Bulga. It was rumoured that Skahawk had created this weapon from the twisted bones of a sea monster. 
that she would choose one warrior to bestow it upon, and that such a warrior would then wield a weapon that could not fail to eviscerate an enemy. Cucullin wanted to be this warrior more than anything, but Ferdia would grow quiet at the mention of the gay Bulga. To Ferdia, such power seemed like a curse. He would not wish this poison chalice to be bestowed upon him. Nor did he wish it for his friend. One morning, before dawn had even begun to streak the sky, Ferdia and Kukulan awoke in each other's arms to the sound of a blood-curdling screech that reverberated through the fortress. It was Skahok summoning her trainee warriors, though this was no training exercise. They were under attack. This was not an uncommon situation. Skahok had many enemies. Her voice rang out again, calling her warriors to the bloody fray to meet Garmon Garbgloss and his horde of 400 cowards who would only dare attack under the Shroud of Darkness. Ferdia and Kukulan leapt together out of bed, their hearts beating as one, their spirits lit with the same battle fury. Grabbing their weapons, they ran outside, and they led the charge against the enemy horde. Though Skahok's warriors were vastly outnumbered, they quickly gained the upper hand. Ferdia and Kukulan fought in perfect symbiosis with each other. They could hardly be told apart from each other. When Rin McNewell raised his sword to Ferdia's exposed back, Kukulan, with calmness and composure, cut that warrior in two. When Ruid MacFornoil clashed with Kukulan, Ferdia howled like a hound and tore that warrior asunder. They cut their way through to the heart of the Horde. Those they didn't kill were left blinded by their shared battle rage, so fierce yet so focused. In this dizzy disorientation, the Horde was left as easy pickings for the rest of Skahok's students. Soon, the 400 were reduced to one, Garmon himself, their leader. Wordlessly, Ferdia and Kukulan disarmed and bound Garmon and brought him to Skahok. The shadowy one dragged him ashen-faced into her inner sanctum. His screams rang out for days to come. Then they stopped. Shortly after, Ferdia and Kukulan were summoned to see Skok in her quarters. The dark residue of whatever had happened to Garmon Garbgloss hung heavy in the air. Skahok's wild eyes shone out through the dim light of the room as she whispered ancient incantations. A pact of friendship, of brotherhood, she placed between them. One that, if broken, would invoke unspeakable consequences. Then, out of the darkness, she produced the twisted, vicious shape of the gay Bulga and laid the weapon between Ferdia and Kukulan. Kukulan, without hesitation, leaned forward and picked up the gay Bulga. Ferdia hung back in the shadows and said nothing. When the training course ended, Cúchulain made his preparations to leave Skahok's Island and return to Ulster, back to his homeland and his wife-to-be, Emer. Before his departure, Ferdia held him tight whispered his blessings and his love and his friend kissed him back tenderly. As Cúchulain walked away, Ferdia took one last look at him, the gay Bulga in his hand. The sight of that weapon never failed to send a shiver through Ferdia. Ferdia thanked the gods 
he was at least on the same side as Kukulam. This podcast was produced and edited by Oshin Ryan and Rory O'Shea. You can find out more about us on our website, candlelittales.ie. And we're on all social media, so like and follow us on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter at Candlelit Tales or send us a message or get onto our mailing list. For more videos and live streams, like and subscribe to our Candlelit Tales YouTube channel, which now has a Candlelit Tales for Kids playlist. Hashtag Candlelittle Tales. Liking and subscribing to our channel really helps us grow and get to more people. And if you're able to give us more direct support, you can chip in a few bob at patreon.com forward slash Candlelit Tales or make a one-time donation through the PayPal button on our website. We also do really like to hear back from you with your questions and requests. So please feel free to contact us directly or leave your question in the comments section below. Because what we really want to do is get these stories out there. Share them with as many people as possible. So anything you can do to help, we really appreciate. And we really appreciate you listening. Gurmila Magar.